you ever have those days where you just feel like you're missing something and you can't figure it out like like i knew something wouldn't right i hadn't made a lot of video today and shot a lot of video it's cold but i had some ideas and had some things i was gonna be doing and i could not find my little bendable flexible tripod let me show you where i found it so you saw that video of houston and i fishing you know it was like 80 degrees all nice you know not like 40 today but i had hung my tripod in a tree and there it still hangs i used it here and forgot all about it i got to chasing that boy around and worried about him you know here trying to go up this steep bank without falling in the creek left it hanging there been looking for it all morning long and finally ding the bell went off in my head i hung it in a tree right there i'm telling you what if you're a youtube person or you video anything with your phone or a small camera this right here is one invaluable piece of equipment because you know this is a pretty steep bank there's nowhere i could really put a tripod out here i use this thing all the time for all kinds of video stuff you can put it wherever you want hang it upside down sideways whatever i just got a little mount on here for my phone and it works great get you one of these things it's made by joby a joby flexible tripod is like 40 bucks at best buy i think i price matched it from amazon so if you like it um i'll see if i can put a link below in the description to this thing and uh, you'll you'll like that thing I, I promise you it's a good product just don't leave it hanging in a tree down by the creek time to release the crazy goats act like they're starving they want out y'all ready to go y'all want to go eat y'all ready you want out of there no. let's let them out y'all may want to duck because there's a good chance they're gonna try to run over you come on goat There's always a couple that can't find the gate. Look at them. Gate's right there. How hard is it to follow the herd? Apparently it's kind of hard for them. Well, with temperatures in the 40s today, after the last two days being in the high 70s, low 80s, I've really been needing to cut a little more firewood but it was hard to do when the temperatures were 75 degrees. Now that it's 40-ish, it's easier. Because who's in the mood to go cut firewood when it's 80 degrees outside? That's when you get gardening on the mind. Now I don't consider myself a firewood connoisseur or a chainsaw expert by any means. If you're looking for somebody that's super knowledgeable on firewood and studies it like an art, go check out Eric over at Life and Farmland on YouTube. Eric has some amazing knowledge. Some he is just he's just he's just top-notch guy when it comes to firewood and chainsaws and all that stuff. So go check him out. Now we don't burn a lot of firewood in Oklahoma most years. Some years it gets really cold for a long time, and then like this year, it's up and down, up and down. So I don't have like two years worth of firewood stockpiled all the time because there's years we don't use very much and it would just rot. So I kind of use what I, what I need or I cut what I need and use it. And the way I do most of my firewood, most of what I use is like this tree right here. I'll show it to you in a second. It's just a, this one's just a, a an oak tree that blew over. Um, it had a storm come through and it snapped it off. Uh, most of the firewood I cut is standing dead timber. Let me show you this. This is pretty cool. This is a standing dead tree that the woodpeckers have got a hold of. Check that out. That is pretty cool. There's something, some kind of bug living in that tree that the woodpeckers are after big time. So anyways, as I was saying, I've got a ton of standing dead timber and that's usually what I use for firewood. I rarely ever go cut a live tree down for firewood. 
This is a big oak tree that snapped off about 20 feet up in the air from a storm. Look how much firewood there is here on the ground. I mean, it was a big tree. There's a lot of wood there. Now, as I said, I'm not a chainsaw expert, but I'm gonna show you real quick what I use. I've got two saws. I always like to carry two saws out when I'm working in case one goes down or chain breaks or something's wrong. But I've also got another reason I use two saws. Let me show you real quick. Now, my first saw is my big steel. It's a, a MS270C steel. It's a big, heavy chainsaw. Um, I think this is the same saw that, that Doug over at Off Grid with Doug and Stacy said he uses. He posted a video a couple days ago, and I think this is the exact same saw. But it's a big, heavy, powerful saw. And I use it on these big trees like this. If I'm taking a tree down and cutting through the big part of the trunk, this big, heavy steel goes through them really fast. This saw, I've had this saw since 2005. Um, it's a good quality saw. Steel's a good brand. It's been in the shop a couple times, but it's just minor stuff. Just carburetor fixes mostly, because gas, ga gasoline's terrible these days. And then my second saw, you've seen me use this before, is an Echo, Echo brand. We got a local guy here in town that sells them. Uh, I'm really pleased with this. It's a little small saw. I think it's got a, either a 12 or 14 inch bar. It's a 14, 14 inch bar. This is perfect for, for limbing up these trees. Once they're on the ground, you cut all those little limbs off. It's light. This thing probably weighs maybe half as much as that big steel. So you can wave this thing around one arm all day and it won't wear you out near as fast as that big steel. I love this little saw. I, I'm, I found myself more and more often, anytime I got it working on a tree that that bar will cut through, I find myself reaching for this instead of that steel because it'll wear you out. So Echo, good brand. I'm super pleased with them. Uh, it's the first Echo tool I've had. I also have a, uh, after buying this, I also bought a leaf blower off, off our local guy. And great service, great product. So Echo and Steel are the two brands that I'm using right now. And as I said, I'm no expert when it comes to chainsaws and, and firewood and all that. But I do want to stress this. I want to emphasize this. If you're going to be out cutting firewood, there's some things that you need to have, okay? First is you need a good pair of high quality leather gloves. You don't want to cut your hands on these limbs, okay? I use these little foam earplugs. I also have the big hard plastic ones, but I find that to me these are just these work really well and they're cheap. I mean, you can get a whole box of them for like 2 bucks. Safety glasses, not just in case your four-year-old shoots you in the eye with a Nerf gun, but these are good quality safety glasses. They've got the foam liners, so when you put them on, that foam helps seal and you don't get all that sawdust in your eyes. But the main thing that you probably really want to invest in, if you're going to be cutting much firewood at all, is a good pair of chainsaw chaps. These things are invaluable. They're Kevlar. Um, if, if you're cutting through a log and that chain slips and, and comes flying off of there, this thing will stop that chain before it cuts through your leg. And the last place you want to be stuck out here in the woods by yourself with your femoral artery bleeding in your leg, you're not going to make it out. Sorry to be graphic, guys, but just the truth. So, safety equipment. You always want eye protection, ear protection, gloves, chaps, leather boots. Just be safe because, you know, safety safety's key. Don't be like me and get shot in the eye with a Nerf dart by your four-year-old and you miss, month, you miss almost a month of work over a Nerf dart. Just imagine what a chainsaw could do, guys. I'm serious. So I'm all geared up, got my chainsaw shaps on, safety glasses, earplugs if you can see them, gloves. I'm gonna start off with my small saw. This tree's got little limbs all up and down it. I'm gonna get those out of the way first, okay? So I can get to the log. Okay, got most of the little limbs out of the way and I can start chopping this thing up into rounds. Now, one thing I wanna add, if you're gonna go out and buy a saw, 
most all of your better chainsaw manufacturers nowadays are going to have a chain stop. And that's this right here. It's a chain break. So when your saw is running, your chain is always spinning. Okay, if you let off your throttle, a little stop, sometimes it'll still spin a little bit. But this safety guard right here, if you push it forward, it's a chain break. Locks that chain. So when you're running your saw, you leave it running. All you do, all you have to do is just pop your hand forward. And if you accidentally hit your throttle, the chain won't go anywhere. And that saw is much safer that way. You ready to go back to cutting? Reach up, pull it to you, take off again. Let me demonstrate it real quick with the saw running. switch over to my big heavy steel and cut this thing up a little bit. Chop it into smaller logs. cut on that big oak for a long time cut several logs off of it and it's just a little too wet I split a couple of them but shoot they're this big around I mean they're probably 18 inches across and with them being a little bit wet and a little bit green still they just weren't wanting to split by hand so I moved over and found me another tree standing dead tree and as you can tell by the way that was splitting this is dry as a bone just like kiln dried lumber and this will burn great i've got all that other tree cut up well not all of it a bunch of it cut up and those logs will dry out faster cut got another standing dead tree all cut up i'm gonna get it loaded i can get the house and take a break before i have to go to work tonight Well, there you have it guys that's my take on firewood and how i do my firewood situation for our wood stove in our house use lots of standing dead timber and trees that have fallen down on my property so i'm not cutting down the live trees and if you're looking for an expert in firewood on how to stack why to stack what to cut what logs what types of timber have certain btus check out eric over at life and farmland i'll leave a card and a link in the description below to his channel he's a great channel awesome guy and i'll also leave a link if i can remember i'll leave a link below in the description to all the stuff i use so you can go check it out the saws the shafts things like that so remember two saws are better than one and always wear your safety gear because it can happen to you well thanks for watching guys i hope that helps i hope you might have learned something or maybe you were just entertained for a few minutes Anywho, either way, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next video.